Today I will show you the new version for Meshroom 2023. We will see the improvements. We will compare it to Meshroom 2020. We can see that we have more than double the structure for motion. That's quite an improvement. We will also see how we can edit the final 3D file into Blender 3.5. And we will also check how we can publish the 3D model on Sketchfab. Today we will talk about Meshroom 2023, what's new, what we get with CUDA 11 and what are the, the other improvements of the new version. First, if you install uh, Meshroom 2023, you have to handle the NVIDIA uh, graphic card, so you have to attribute it. It's not automatic attributed if you have an internal graphic card. You can attribute manually uh, an XF file or a program to the NVIDIA uh, graphic card. So you can search for your program. We can see what's already uh, attributed. If we go here on Meshroom, I have the option to have the NVIDIA card or the internal graphic card. So always attribute it to the NVIDIA card as we need CUDA. Use my reference shooting with 89 images. I can always compare the same shooting with different programs or with improvements. So we have the 89 images and we will go into the detail what we have to change here in the graph editor from the nodes. There are some important changes to make, but uh, for the first um, nodes we let all on standard. So we do not change anything. For example, for the feature extraction, we let all on normal. We don't go on high or ultra. We let all uh, here on normal. Also describer quality normal. We don't change here anything. Same for the image matching. Structure from motion, we don't change anything. Prepare then sense no changes and also here for the death map we don't change anything. The first point we change something it's in the meshing. The minimum observer, observation angle for SMF space estimation we change it to 40. It's standard on 10 but you will get too many points from the surrounding, we don't need that. We concentrate on the barn inside the shooting, not outside the shooting. So you can play with that. You can minimize for the calculation here if you go up to 30 degrees. And at the end for the texturing, we change it to JPEG. If you will upload it to Sketchfab, it's important that we have low file size so it's important to change here on JPEG. We have uh, different possibilities uh, to, to a texture. We use the basic method that will cr uh, create several texture files. Unfortunately, the LSM, LSCM and the ABF will not work. That's a, a bug. You can download my 89 images from my website. We always use these files for reference. As you can see here, it's a full spherical shooting. It's no uh, CD, 2D uh, flat shooting. And I just added at the end some pictures from the front. This full spherical uh, shooting is made with HDR panel 3D. You can create the pass, the mission pass with the map creator. And you can also use that on Lychee if you use the, the Helix 3D mode. At the end we get seven textures files. We get the object file, it's about 300 megabytes. It's a real text file. And the MTL file where we have all the links to the texture files. The log, statistics and status file, it's not important for Blender. It's just the output from Meshroom. So one important point, 
if we have a look on this seven te um, texture files, you can see the resolution. It's about 4096 pixel. And we get for all these seven images, 74 megabytes. That's too much. So you can compress it, not uh, reduce the size, but we can compress it with a higher JPEG compression factor. You can do that with your uh, photo program to get less image quality. It's not so important for texture files to have high quality. Now we will import the object file into Blender. We go to File, Import, Object File, and then we choose our directory where we have saved the output from Meshroom. From Meshroom you get all these folders, so it's the latest one here, Texturing. and we import the object file. When the object file is imported, you can see with our angle here for the 40 degrees, we get only small surrounding from the barn. If you use the default value with 10 degrees, you get much more surrounding, but that's not uh, useful. So we use 40 degrees. Now, first thing we have to do, we have to place this barn on the grid. We have here two possibilities. We can move in each direction from the axis or we can turn it. The easiest way to do is to always choose one uh, direction so we can see if it is right on the angle. But I will first place it here in the center. So we move it like this. Before I turn the barn, I will set the origin on this surface. Set origin on surface. Now it's much more easier to turn it. Like that. And then I will change the view from the front of this barn. You can always click or move here around. And we see it's not perfectly on the horizon. So I turn it like this and then I will change the view like that and turn it in the right position. Now I have to move it. You can have the 3D models also below the, the horizon here as we use only the center. And now uh, it's quite perfect. We can also have a look on the texture. So it's quite a good result from uh, Meshroom 2023s. Now I will reduce the vertices as I have centered my barn. For this, uh, we go into edit mode. We have first to select the model, go to into edit mode. Then we will add transparency to select really all. We have first to unselect all the vertices. You can just click here in the background. Then we will use a box selection. something like that and important to be on transparency to select really all vertices and now I will invert the selection and then with the delete button I will delete all these vertices from the surrounding As we can see here, we have some vertices which are not allocated with the, the model. We have also to delete them.
Now we go back to object mode and we can unselect the transparency. I will add texture to see the result. So it's quite good. We get much more details if we compare it to Meshroom 2020. We add a modifier, decimate, and we will decimate with a ratio from 0 0.5, so half of the numbers of vertices. Then we click on Apply. It will take some seconds to do that. And now we have reduced the number of vertices to 50%. If we go back to the Edit mode, we can zoom in and we can see here all these vertices. So you can continue to reduce, as we have still a lot here, or you can also let it be like that. It will be now enough to upload it to Sketchfab. So it's not more than 100 megabytes. Always be aware about that. But I think we can use that barn like it is here. If you like, you can also change the light. If you go here on viewpoint shading, so we have two possibilities only to have the texture without any additional light. And here we can play with the lights. We can see we have one light here. And now the possibility we have, we can also move this light and we can also change so we can put the light right into the front and we can also exactly change the angle We can also adjust the light power, light radius. For the light power, click here and then move the mouse like that. So we can change the, the light power. If you go back to only texturing, you can see that the shooting was made without any sunlight directly here. That's also very important. If you take photogrammetry images that you have no direct sunlight on the object, as we will add the light later, like we did it here. So each one can have the light where it needs to be. Now we can save the 3D file. We have uh, different possibilities. Normally what I do to check is to re-export the object file to see uh, really the size of the object file. For this we have to go to export. But uh, before we do that I will, oh, I will show you that you can automatically pack resources. But that's uh, not important actually for the object file. We will use that later for the Blender file. So we will export an object file. We go back to our folder. Here we can see our previous uh, object file, 300 uh, megabytes. Now I will save the reduced one. It will take some time as it is a text file with many lines. So 
now we get two new files if we have a look on the file size it's the half from the original file so it worked now we can check if we are below 100 megabyte the file size to upload it to sketchfab i select all the files we need so also the mtl file it's very important and now i create a zip file If I have a look on the zip file, we are about 140 megabytes, so it's too much. What can we do to reduce this size? I will first delete the zip file. We have 74 megabytes I, and now I will reduce that. I use uh, Photoshop, you can also use Affinity Photo. The program you like or GIMP show you how I do it in Photoshop don't change the, the name of the file that's very important as in the MTL file we have the, the link to these uh, texture files I will simply save under I will change it to a high compression, not maximal, only high. But it's still high, it's not medium, so it's quite a good quality. I will do that. And if we have a look now on the file size, it's this one, I reduced it more than the half. We go on the total we are at 65 now not 74 and i will do that for the other files now i did all the texture files we get a total for 21 megabyte so that's quite a huge reduction if I recreate the zip file, we get now 62 megabytes. Now, uh, one thing you can uh, upload this zip file to Sketchfab, or we can do another file, but that's what's important that I first reduced all these files here, and I will reload my barn object into Blender. If we go back to Blender, we can see here the barn file with the half of the style size. So we will load this one. You can see it's the cut off what we did before. So what we uh, lose in an object file is the light. So we have to reposition the, the light if we will use it later and now we can save this object as a blender object but before we do that we go to external datas automatically pack resources and now I will save my file as a blender file I will name it barn and save it and now it will pack all the texture files all the files we need in one file in this uh, blender file so we have we don't have to be aware about the texture files it's all compressed into the blender file now we have saved the blender file and we can see that it has 171 megabyte 
and the zip file has only 62. That's why I used my barn object with 148 megabytes. So before we upload it to a Sketchfab, we can also compress the Blender file. Now if we compare the file size from the zipped Blender file to the object file, we can see that the Blender file has more file size, but into this uh, Blender file, in this, into this zipped Blender file, we have also the light positions, for example. But <coughs> we can use both to upload it to Sketchfab. Now we have logged into Sketchfab. We click on Upload. We can drag and drop the zip file. I will first do that with the object zipped file. Now we can see all the files into the zip, upload files. I can change the title, add a description. can also add tags, so it's much more easy to find the file. We can also choose a category or several. And now uh, Sketchfab is working onto the object file to transform it into a HTML file. Once we have uploaded the file and it's ready to publish, we edit the 3D settings. Now we can see it. So the initial view is already good. It's the front of the barn. So we have not to change anything here. What you can do is change the background, change the light. But uh, as it is now, we can even publish it directly. So here we have different possibilities. We can go to the light. We can uh, have the materials, post-processing, annotations, animations. We can uh, do quite a lot of things. We can uh, change to shadeless. It's better to uh, if you show your models without any light. So somebody is interested to download your file, he will use it like that and will place his own lights. And you can also change the background to present better your model. If you change from shadeless to lead, we can hear if the lights are on, also play with the lights. But that's not so interesting for so somebody who like to download your 3D, so we don't use the, the lights and we go to shadeless. We can also add some filters. Here, the depth of the field, that's like a camera view. You can add a vignette. So you have quite a lot of possibilities to present your 3D model. Before we publish uh, this view, we have first to save our settings and now uh, we can publish it. I don't do it as I already published my barn before, but that's just to show you how it works. You can have a look on my models on Sketchfab. I've used different programs to make the 3D models.
if we compare the result of Meshroom 2023, we have quite an improvement and it's quite a pleasure to work with it. The speed is for both versions the same, but we get more than double of the structure in the new Meshroom 2023. I hope you give it a try. Thanks for watching, until the next time.